Hello everyone, welcome to this session on functional versus object-oriented programming languages. Today in this session, we will be telling you the differences and the things in common between these two kind of programming languages. Now when you talk about functional programming languages, uh, examples of the C native language, these do not have the concepts like classes, abstraction, encapsulation, etc. And as you might know, these are basically object-oriented concepts. Now there are key differences between these programming languages and you should know when to use which programming language and that is exactly what we are going to cover in this session. So let's go ahead and start off with the session guys. But before we start off, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the IntelliPath channel and also click on that bell icon to never miss out on any updates from us. So now let's get started with the session. Let's begin this quick comparison by understanding what functional programming actually is. Well, as the name suggests, functional program is basically a methodology that actually involves an understanding what the result is rather than how we get to the result. For example, the entire goal of a get, get product function or a get sum or a get difference function is to know that you will always get the products, the sum and the difference whenever you give any inputs to the function, right? For example, if you're checking out the get product as you can see on your screen right now, this can always uh, calculate the product of two inputs and it'll give you the same input, right? So if we give two and two as the input, we get four because two multiplied with two is four. And uh, if we give three multiplied with six, we get 18 always so this you know this nature this property of always having to provide the outputs knowing that you will get the expected output and understanding not how you get there but why and what uh, is the outputs for the particular inputs is all that functional programming mainly concentrates about now with object oriented programming it's a little bit different because here what we're trying to do is we're trying to understand how the aspect of how rather than what to understand that, we need to check out the basis of object-oriented programming. And as the name suggests, when we talk about OOP, as it's called in short, every single entity, every single thing uh, that we deal in this programming paradigm is basically an, an object. So each of these objects will have something called as attributes. It will have some sort of functionalities that will basically give you a description of what the object is and what it does. Now, uh, let's consider a simple example of a car, right? Let's take a, let's take any car as an example. So now the attributes basically describe what the car is. Now think of it this way. The car is of red color, so that becomes an attribute. It has four doors, it becomes a sedan. If it had two doors, it was the coupe. Now it's a sports car as well, so it goes pretty fast. It has shiny wheels and you know, all of these describe the car as in, right? You pretty much get the picture. Now, what can the car do? This is what the functions will talk about. The car can go forward, go back, go sideways. It can go really fast. It can, in fact, move and stop. It has windscreen wipers. It has air conditioning and all of this. Right? So all of these are functions which will basically describe the capabilities of the car. So this is like the basic example of how how an object is handled in this paradigm, you know, with the attributes and with the functionality as well. Now with this quick understanding of both of these paradigms, let us quickly check out a comparison uh, between functional and object oriented programming structures. Now, the first point I want to discuss is definition. So with definition, as we've previously checked out, uh, functional programming has to do everything with just the evaluation part of it without having any headache to understand how things work or, you know, without having to give your time and effort uh, into processing the how part of it. Now, with OOP, it's basically similar, but here everything is objectified. Every single thing that the programmer, uh, you know, tends to use, tends to define, tends to architect is an object or it's considered as an object. And hence, the architecture is called as object oriented programming. With point number two, uh, you know, it's a programming model because here is where the main uh, difference lies as we have been discussing for a minute or two now. Because with functional programming, you know, it follows what we call as the declarative programming model, while OOP follows something called as the imperative programming model. So with functional programming, what we're trying to understand is basically the expressiveness of the logic without having to describe how it works. So hence the what in the bracket. Now to give you a very quick example for you guys to understand what declarative is and what imperative programming means, uh, think of it like you want to build your dream house, right? So you want to build a house. So if you were to use declarative programming, this is how it would sound like. I want a house and I want it by the beach side. I want a big kitchen and I want the house to be comfortable. This is how you would do it if it was functional programming. 
If it was imperative programming, you would describe every single step. You would say, hey, let's go to the city of your choice. Let's buy a plot of land. Let us build the basic foundation structure of the house. Then, you know, eventually raise up all the walls, get the molding done, you know, eventually uh, do the interior as per your requirement, have a swimming pool, make the house look beautiful and all of these. So you see the step by step architecture, right? You're concerned with the how rather than what. So with declarative programming, you just said, I want to big kitchen but then you never described you know what you want exactly in that kitchen this this is where the main difference lies between functional and oop and of coming to the next point it's the support for parallel programming here is where functional programming has a slight edge over object oriented programming because with functional uh, you know it does support the parallel programming paradigm and it supports making use of distributed computing for high efficiency usages with oop unfortunately it does not support parallel programming as a whole but of course there is a way through which you know you can try to imitate parallel programming and imitate distributed computing through oop but then uh, on the whole it is not as efficient as functional programming and neither does it function in a productive environment as well. So functional programming wins this round. Coming to the next point, it's data handling. When we talk about data handling, there's a variety of data uh, that uh, you know we'll be using, uh, be it in functional programming or object-oriented programming. Functional programming deals very well with immutable data. That is the data which you know does not change in real time where functioning is set, operations are set, and in fact, the operators are used to perform operations. In OOP, that's not the case. OOP is well known. It can handle mutable data where data is continuously changing and you know you can basically have these objects, have parameters, have functions which can know that there is data being changed and you know eventually understand uh, what's going on and work well as well. So the basic basic definition here is if your data doesn't change, you would prefer functional programming. If your data changes a lot, you know, you would prefer object oriented programming on the whole. Coming to point number five, it's order of execution. With order of execution, again, here's a major difference. In functional programming, your statements can run in any order of choice based on what the compiler is doing. For example, if there is a statement at line number three, which will direct the program to line number 10 and back to four, back to five, line number six, line number eight, whatever order it is, it can execute happily and it'll still work. Object-oriented programming is a bit stingy when it comes to that because at the end of the day with object-oriented programming it has to have an order. There has to be a particular order in execution because uh, at the end of the day the architecture is based on that. Again think of the car example. A car is a very complex object right. So to move the car first you'll have to start it. You cannot expect the car to start moving on its own or uh, uh, you know basically you cannot turn on the car without putting in the key and all of that right. So if car is an object certain minute things have to be followed in an ordered way to make sure that everything works. OOP is just like that. Now, which one's better is again uh, very debatable. But at this point of time, if you're learning, if you're here watching this video, I would suggest that functional programming will be a little flexible in terms of workability for you guys. Now, with that, we can check out point number six. Point number six has to deal with usage. You know, with usage, as we've already talked about in functional programming, if there are a lot of operations required, but then there's inputs which do not change, uh, inputs which are, uh, you know, similar, and you already know the outputs, or you know what outputs, sort of what you can expect, then functional programming is the way to go. Object-oriented programming is preferred only when, you know, there are multiple inputs that you want to process, and there's a plethora of inputs, but the operations that you have to perform on it is less then OOP is preferred. So to repeat my point, functional programming is preferred when there's more operations, less operators. With OOP, it's the exact opposite. It's few operations, but more operators, right? Probably just take a second, pause the screen and do take a note of this point at the same time as well. Now, coming to the next point, it is core components. See, with core components, functional programming and OOP at the end of the day are multi-paradigm supported. They both uh, you know, give you a lot of features, a lot of components to work with. 
with functional programming you will be using functions and you will be using variables as the inputs to these functions to you know uh, have the whole operation together with OOP you have objects objects have certain definition and after defining an object you'll have the methods which will define what the object does you'll have attributes which will describe the object and much more as well so in terms of simple usage simple implementation I think functional programming will win this round as well but in terms of detailed usage and in terms of how well you can define something how well you can split it into the OOP structure and how well you can uh, understand the workflow in detail and in depth then OOP uh, takes a win as well so it depends on what your use case is if it's simple go for functional programming if it's complex and you want that complexity there uh, OOP is the way to go now next thing is ease of implementation which one's easy to implement at the end of the day because functional programming can sometimes be difficult because you know you have to think from a functional standpoint you have to look at it from another perspective to see what your inputs are doing uh, how your inputs can be translated into a workable output with OOP that's not the case it's pretty simple because you know it it depends on just taking values and mapping it in real time and basically comparing it to your uh, real life functions as well right I just gave you a car example Example, and that is a perfect example for how an OOP structure will work and since with OOP you can you know compare it and contrast it with anything real life it makes it very easy to understand and it makes it very easy to pretty much grasp if you're a beginner or an intermediate user as well so if it's ease of implementation OOP uh, wins in my opinion now which one's easier to learn because point number nine is all about that in terms of ease of learning uh, functional programming is pretty easy to learn because of the only fact that it does not have complex data handling methodologies or any in-depth manipulation with respect to the data like how we have in oops with oops that's not the case oops is a bit complex if you're starting out because there's so many things you have to look at there's so many attributes so many parameters function definitions function calls method handling protocols inheritance and many other complex which might uh, you know be a little overwhelming if you're beginning with so with this uh, you know you might have a question asking so overall if you had to pick one which is better well that's very difficult to say because you know functional programming is amazingly powerful it's amazingly efficient when you have to do new operations but you already have the input so you already have existing items and there is no beating functional programming when it comes to this and with the object oriented approach it's pretty much again based on requirement if you have a requirement that says you know I want all of my data to be extremely secure very tight knit very packaged uh, and I have to avoid unwanted access unwanted usage it's amazing to go with the object oriented approach because every single entity is an object every single object will have certain permissions uh, that is required to access the object so it makes it more secure and it's almost like taking a block of Legos and putting it uh, and sorting it out in a box so that's how the object oriented approach is even though it might be a bit messy to get started with but at the end of the day it's worth the effort because it's that much more packaged and that much more secured so what do you think about this comparison between functional programming and object oriented programming so if you feel that if there's any more points that you think we should add to this video again head to the comment section and do let us know with that note you've come to the end of this comparison